clicking on today's video. I hope you're ready to channel your inner leprechaun because today we're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. Not only am I going to be taking you along with me as I decorate my home, I've also got an easy and affordable DIY project to share with you. And I've got a spin on a classic dessert that is sure to be perfect for your St. Patrick's Day celebration. So stay tuned and let's get started. First on the agenda, we are crafting some shamrock wreaths. But hold that thought because I have to show you my sweet kitty Philippe. He was dozing off on my supplies like they were his cozy little nest. These are the items we're going to be using for this DIY and they were all very budget friendly. I started by tearing small pieces of moss and placing them sporadically on my wreath. The idea behind this was a hint of moss peeking out among the shamrocks. Once I had enough moss on my wreath, I carefully cut my shamrocks into individual leaves and started attaching them all around the wreath. One wreath got the full leafy treatment, covering it completely, while the other took on a unique horseshoe design with shamrocks covering most of it, but leaving the top of it bare. When they were both finished, I attached a piece of twine on the top of each of them so that I could hang them up. And it's time to start decorating. I'm going to kick things off by decorating my blinds with two garlands I snagged from Michael's last year. Sure, they're a bit leaf challenged from their time in storage, but fear not. I'm on a mission to spruce them up with some leaves that have fallen out, as well as adding some new ones. We all know where we belong, just wait. Ooh, wait for our home to show on the horizon soon. To bring in some of those St. Patrick's Day vibes, I'm going to be adding shamrock picks to this entire garland area. We can't read the sky. We just sail with the wind that we've got. And when we're drowning in doubt, just keep on believing. We are dreamers of the Celine insists that she cannot move from this spot, so we're going to come back to the couch. Up next is my mantle area, where I'm going to be adding a lucky sign that we made together a couple years ago, and I'm also going to be layering various greenery picks on each side. I absolutely love to decorate this space. I feel like it gives the room so much life and character. In case you're new today, I wanted to take a second to introduce myself. My name is Jackie, and this is my magical home, a place where you can find all kinds of creative homemaking. Essentially, my goal is to make the mundane magical, sprinkling a little bit of enchantment and fun into any homemaking pursuit that is before me. Whether or not I'm cleaning the dishes, organizing the cupboards, getting ready for the holidays, decorating my home, making DIYs, going on an adventure with my family, or even better, throwing a movie night or party at home. 
I like to take you along with me for the fun to give you a little bit of extra inspiration. And I hope that you'll consider joining my YouTube family if you haven't already. It's completely free. You just need to hit the button down below. It not only helps to support my channel and let YouTube know that you like my content, it helps to make sure that you don't miss any fun content coming your way. Now let's go ahead and stop talking about me and get back to the video. Now let's add some of that magic to the bar cart where I'm going to start out by adding my slunge sign to the front and we made this previously and it means cheers in Gaelic. Um, in addition to that I'm going to be setting up a bouquet and I also have an additional sign that says let the shenanigans begin which I feel like is just a perfect addition to any bar area. to day two of this decorating fun. I did try to do it all in one night last night, but you guys, I got this great idea. I would take those Halloween colors that, you know, you put in to add like different stripes of color to your hair and I would give myself unicorn hair. Not only could, was it really not that vibrant as I would have hoped, it made my hair the worst texture. You guys, it was, I'm one of those weird people. I like to be able to move my hair at all times and I think it felt like I had plastic hair. It was. I did as much as I could before I had to literally run to the shower to get that out. So let's go ahead and get today started and finish this up. Do you celebrate or decorate for St. Patrick's Day? It is a cherished tradition in my home, and I am lucky enough to have countless joyful memories associated with St. Patrick's Day. But I'm really curious, what do you like to do in your home? Be sure to comment below. adding to my living room is just a little table runner as well as a welcome sign to this little hope chest that I have right by my front door area. I love this hope chest. It was actually built in the 1800s so getting to add a little extra flair to it always brings me joy. Close to curtains. 
the living room complete, it's time to head to the kitchen. But before we can start, I have to create a couple bouquets for the top of my pantry. Does anyone else out there like to use bow floral pieces in your decor? I, of course, would love to use fresh flowers, but I can't even imagine what that would cost overall to do your whole house. And as someone who likes to have a lot of greenery and floral in my home, I will say, if you're going to invest in floral picks, you should consider buying the single flowers versus the bunches, as I feel like they have a tendency to be a lot higher quality of a product. Sometimes it can be pretty pricey and it can add up. But personally, what I like to do is get a really good idea of what I'm looking for and for a couple of years, just kind of get a couple flowers and just continue to add to my pile until I have the large, beautiful product that I'm looking for. That way I'm not breaking the bank, but I also have something that I'll want to use for years to come. Um, all the floral pieces that I am using today came from Michaels. Some of them I've had for years, a couple of them are new. For the vases, I have that antique copper vase, as well as this super cute one with French on it from Michaels. I got, I just absolutely love it. I got it a couple years ago. Um, and whatever items are linkable, I'll be sure to add in the description below. I have another floral tip for you. If you are putting your vase in a high spot or somewhere that's against something, nobody is going to be able to see the back of that bouquet. So you can just focus on the bouquet from the angle that it'll be seen. This will save you money on extra flowers and it'll save you extra time. I'm just going to add these bouquets and a couple other touches to the top of my pantry. I also have a large mossy shamrock on top of the center pantry door that I'm going to be adding. Now it's time to bring some of that St. Patrick's Day magic to the chandelier. I'm just going to be adding a simple boxwood garland as well as some of those shamrocks. I'll let you go, just need some time. At your own pace, you need to find your way. It's time to head to the other side of the kitchen because we are going to be adding a couple touches to the top of my cupboards above my stove. I also have a couple things for the Lazy Susan that's below it on the counter. The night was long as I waited without a sign. I know what matters, matters to you, but what do you want, what's your biggest need, every hour we spend together, and suddenly, the chances are small just like the lottery. These are the towels I had for decorating, and I'm going to add them as well as my avocado pot holders to the front of my stove. I use shower curtain hooks to hold on my pot holders in case you guys are curious. Together, 
And it's time to decorate the coffee bar. As I'm sure you know, I love to decorate the space, but I don't always go in knowing ahead of time how I want things. So you're gonna notice that I move things around quite a bit. But in the end, I was so happy with it, and it has been such a pleasure in the mornings when I get up. my decor in the kitchen with my table and you might be wondering why hadn't I done this earlier it's because it's a magnet to my cats guys the moment that they see it decorated it's like they start acting like it's a personal slip and slide that I put just for them and I wanted you to see though how I plan to decorate it on St. Patrick's Day so I still decorated it for the video but on a normal day this is not decorated <laughs> I'm sure you've all had the classic dessert lemon bars before. Today we're gonna to be doing a St. Patrick's Day twist as we make lemon lime bars, naturally. This recipe is immensely simple, and as you can see, it starts out with a boxed lemon bar mix. I'm not trying to cheat, guys, but why make life harder than it needs to be? And so I am all for using mixes and kind of doctoring them up. And so I do actually make this fairly as it's called for, with just a couple little tweaks here and there. And one of the ones that I do even if I'm just making them into lemon bars and not just lemon lime bars, is change out the water for milk when I'm making my curd. And that makes a huge difference in the flavor of your bars. I have had people that have made this recipe and people tell them that they do not believe that they were not made in a bakery or that there's not some special recipe. They did not believe they came from a box mix. So changing out that milk makes a huge difference. Once my curd was mixed, I set it aside and it was time to start on the crust. And this I made exactly as it was called for, but I found it a little sticky when I was trying to push down the crust. But once I got it level and across my pan, I put it into the oven for 12 minutes. Right before I pulled out my crust, I went back to my curd and gave it a quick mix and I also added a squeeze of lime juice and a drop of blue food coloring. It's bananas what a change the lime juice adds. It makes the perfect balance between lemon and lime. And so once this is all poured in over the crust, I put it back into the oven for another 24 minutes or so and then I pull it out and let it cool for one hour. Our bars are out of the oven and they are cooled, so now it is time for us to take them out of the pan and we're going to cut them and give them a little bit of extra magic decoration. Before you take your bars out of the pan, you want to make sure to take a butter knife around the edge to break it free from the pan. Uh, then I use a large spatula to help me take it out and set it on the cutting board. A tip for cutting lemon or lemon and lime bars like we're making today is to wipe down your knife in between the cuts. A clean knife helps to keep it from sticking to the bars as much and helps to give you nice clean cuts. 
and it's time to decorate. I'm first adding some white and green edible glitter to my little spray thingy, and I'm covering the entire dish in glitter, just for the joy of it, of course. And I also brought in some edible gold paint, and I attempted to add a couple of shamrocks on the top. It's a little hard to see on camera, but it was a very fun effect in person. sharing that dessert with my family when they get home so I'm not going to be doing a taste test today. We have made these before and I can promise you they are out of this world. If you decide to try them let me know. I'd love to see your pictures on Instagram so be sure to tag me. I'm going to close this video out here. I hope that this has brought you tons of St. Patrick's Day inspiration and I hope that you have an absolutely magical day my friends. Until next time. Come and go in shady places to sit and stare Now the light runs through my lashes oh, It's taken 40 years Blood is sweat and tears